We are in the model shop at the Fisher's Museum in Lüneburg. We built this shop a few years ago. It's being manned by members of the South Shore Shipmodelers Guild, and, and we volunteer in here, and there's somebody in here each day of the week, and today it's my turn. This is a model of the Blue Nose, the original Blue Nose, built 1921. And when I built this, I decided it would be interesting to build this model as what I call a cutaway, but to show the interior of the way this vessel might have been in 1921 when they were going out fishing. And as you can see, I've got lots of stuff in here. I've got the, the, salt, the salt bin here. And if you notice, you see the little shovel there? Well, it's a wooden shovel. You wonder, why would it be wood? It doesn't rust. Shoveling salt, right? And so what you see in here, everything I, ma I made, except there's a little piece of chain here and a little piece of chain there, it's the only thing I didn't build. Of course, the original 1921, there's quite a big difference in this when they, people were fishing. And it, first of all, the hole in here was made to carry fish. And you've got the cruise quarters who are not as comfortable as the Blue Nose 2 is today. And we have the quarters back here, which are much smaller than what the Blue Nose 2 is today. And of course, again, you have to with regulations of, of uh, Transport Canada, there's a lot of difference in what's going on in this boat. And of course, the other thing, the original Malunos didn't have a motor in it until 1937, I believe. And of course, the new, the Malunos II has, is motorized. And winches are motorized on the Malunos II, which the winches on this were all done by hand. Hoisting that big mainsail by hand, you know. It's, mainsail was uh, 4,000 square feet, on the, and the Blue Nose too has that same sail dimension. And it seems to me that I've been interested in ship for a long, long time. Matter of fact, I found some school books of my older sisters that I had scratched little model boats of some kind. And I probably was about six or seven years old at that time. We immigrated to Canada in, 19, in 1952 to Briar Island, which was a great place for a kid who's interested in, in boats. And it kind of started there more than anything, building models of the local fishing boats, like Cape Island type boats. And then as time went by, got older, we moved to St. John, New Brunswick, and I got a job there at the St. John Shipbuilding and Dry Dock Company Limited, which was at Irving Yard. And I served apprenticeship there as a joiner, which was a four-year course. And from there, they started a model shop in the shipyard and it, by using the models that was used for to promote the shipyard or some of them were built to work out problems, like piping, for instance, make sure piping went through the engine rooms and that kind of thing. And then from there, I was very fortunate and got a job with the Ontario Science Centre. 1965, the Science Centre was a centennial project for on Ontario. So. And yeah, so I've been going a little nuts about building models ever since. It's not an unfair question to ask if I have a favorite model, and definitely this is one of them. Yeah, maybe the top one. Everywhere you go, somebody knows something about the Blue Nose across the world. I got a letter one time from the island of St. Helena down in the South Atlantic. They wanted, inf this person wanted information or, or drawings of the Blue Nose. And they sent me a letter, and that island is where Napoleon was imprisoned. So how somebody from that island knows about the Blue Nose, it shows you how famous she was. 
I built half models of the Blue Nose and I have built two or three full models of the Blue Nose over, over time. The main reason that the Blue Nose was so famous was through her racing career. And uh, as you know, she was one of the best. And she was beaten a couple of times, but, but not overall. So she was definitely well known all across the world. I've done other models. I've done a big clipper ship model of a vessel called the um, Sovereign of the Seas, which was built by a man by the name of Donald Mackay in East Boston. Donald Mackay came from Shelburne, Nova Scotia. And it was a large model. It was over six feet long, clipper ship sails and everything. So there was a, that model took me four years to build full time. I've done a model of a vessel built in Gloucester, Massachusetts called the Columbia. Columbia is a beautiful vessel also, but very typical. It was made for fishing, really, but it was also built to beat the Blue Nose, which she didn't do totally. But uh, I was lucky and got a set of drawings of the Columbia. A friend of mine called me about it, Keith McLaren. And, um, I think he said it was on eBay. So anyway, anyway, long story short, I got a hold of the drawings. And when I opened the drawings up, I got really excited because it showed every rope size, every pulley size, even the hooks in the pulleys, which are, which are the part that hooks onto something or other. It tells you whether the hook was going to port or starboard, fore or aft. So you never forget that information in drawings. So because of that information, in a way, it made it easy for me to build that model. Talking model-wise, this was a little bit difficult to build because when you're, say, building the deck beams on a full model, you can, you can take that deck beam and it'll launch on the other side of the hull. Well, I couldn't do that here, so I had to make a jig for ev almost every move I made on on this, so it's, um, it was a little technique that I had to come up with as I built this model. This one was 11 months, full time. Of course, it's only halfway there, so. <laughs> tools I use, are, a lot of it's sort of basic woodworking tools, chisels and gouges and stuff, but I also come up with a lot of innovative tool, make, make some tools. I use actually quite a bit of dental explorers that I will change and sharpen and make little tiny, tiny chisels out of them. And uh, of course, when you're clamping stuff, I have very tiny little clamps that I've made myself. So, and yeah, there's quite a bit of different tools, which I come up with, and I think every model builder will do that. They come up with their own way of doing things. And that isn't wrong, obviously, at all. And, uh, and I have a very tiny little table saw, little sanding machine, and I also have a big 10-inch table saw, which I, you know, I can cut some big stock before I get to this size. I used um, maple for the frames, or people call them ribs, the proper name is frames, and I planked it in pine. And I've used some, some uh, hardwood box, stuff called boxwood for the hard, for railings and that kind of stuff. The dories are entirely made out of boxwood. Boxwood is not wood that comes from boxes. It's a wood called boxwood. It's very hard material, but beautiful stuff to work with. Um, what else? Um, I think mostly now, oh, I've used uh, Sitka spruce for the spars of the mast. In this case, just half mass, as you can see. Use lignum vitae for the dead eyes, which was, lignum vitae is actually the hardest wood in the world. And these vessels like the Blue Nose, even the Blue Nose too has lignum vitae dead eyes. And these dead eyes were actually made out in Second Peninsula here in Nova Scotia by 
um, Daphne people. And I think Arthur Daphne has, still does a little bit of block making and dead eye making when need be. A dead eye is a circular block, in this case lignum vitae. In the blue nose there were seven inches in diameter and there's three holes in them and when you look at them they kind of look like a skull but it's also called a dead eye because there's no wheels in it. There's just holes where the rope passes through, the lanyards pass through. So the, the eye thing is dead. It doesn't have anything moving in it. That's where that comes from. There's lots of older people who, who come to visit here at the model shop. Our club cannot get young people interested in building this because I think kids today, if it isn't instant gratification, and it's no good. And if we've been trying to get young people interested in this, there's two young kids from Tancock Island who are members of this club, and they're like 14 or 15, 16 years old. We don't see them too much because of where they live. Uh, their father brought them to the club. And uh, actually one of them is now building a model of an aircraft carrier, I heard. So, yeah, now the answer is no, we can't get people too interested anymore, which is kind of sad, I think. This is a model, a likeness of the original blue nose. I, 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 I'm trying to be as accurate as I can, but there's some things that just don't work out. Um, some of the things that in front of us also, this is a section of it, the way that I made up. It's actually this section right here. I made it up so that people can pick it up and look at it and see how the boat is made, and so that I know how the boat is made. That's one thing I needed to do. Um, Here's a little legend of, of uh, the detail about uh, the boat. We moved to uh, Nova Scotia about eight years ago. I've always been, my hobby's always been woodworking of some kind. It might be carving, it might be cabinetry, I made a grandfather clock, all kinds of things. But in the past, I always wanted to make a ship. And I had a, a model kit of the Cuddy Sark. And we were a lot younger at the time, and we had four children, and they liked to play with the pieces. <laughs> and it just got disintegrated, so I never got to do that. So when I got here, I came to the model shop right here. I'm standing, looking in this window, talking to one of the uh, craftsmen. And it just it became obvious I'd better join, because if I want to make a model, it's going to be here. I would have all the help from the members of the guild, as well as... Um, you know, a wonderful place to come and work if I wanted to. So I settled on the blue nose thinking, probably correctly, that pretty well everybody's made a blue nose and I would be able to get a whole lot of help. And in fact, that, that has been the case. Um, I guess I didn't mention, these, these, will end, these little things will end up to be little wooden nails that go in these little tiny holes here to hold all these planks on. Um, the wood that's involved here, everything, all the frames or ribs or whatever you like to call them are made of maple. The keel is made of maple and it's all out of a board I bought, at East Coast Lumber. It's about four foot long and about uh, six inches wide, cut down to make all the pieces that I need. The deck, which is the second deck, the first one I didn't like so I ripped it off. And that's one of the things I've done here is if, if I don't like it, it comes off and it gets redone. This particular piece of pine is an old drawer bottom that I cut up and made all these little planks and they're 1 8 by a 16th, all nailed in. So a, a lot of work's gone into it. Uh, the process has taken me, I like to call it a journey, uh, it's probably taken me about um, six years to get to this point. I have another one, all the frames were made, I didn't like it, put it aside, I'm going to make a diorama out of it, and then I start it again. I've made these frames three times, and I finally got them right. Um, and I've been documenting 
well, the process, the journey. Everything that's not going to work. Everything that go, that goes into this is in my little book. Um, this stand is just a temporary one. These are just dowel from the hardware store, temporarily uh, installed. And that's kind of where I'm at. Um, I got to move on to nailing all these boards in and on to the next step, which is building the uh, fittings that go on the top, like a cab and a hold, etc. That's going to be more fun. This has been a pretty tedious work. I get in, I go in spurts. You know, I get, I've been working really hard for the last two weeks. I put all this stuff on, on each side, drilled all the holes. Um, I'm probably going to put it away when I get home for a couple of weeks. Or I'll get in the mood, hood it comes, and away I go again. Um, that's just how it works. I find if I start rushing, that's when I make a mistake, and it's time to put it away. I don't have the opportunity to work in here very often because I live about an hour and a half away from here, but when I do, it's, it's fun. You know, you want to work on something, but you end up talking to people. And uh, I now have something that I can talk about. When I first started coming here, I didn't even have this, so, so I would love to come and spend some time here and work away at it. We moved to Nova Scotia eight years ago. If you're going to make a ship, what ship would you make? The Blue Nose. And this is the original one, not the current version. Um, and that's really all the uh, factors that went into the decision. That's it. I also, sorry, I also have a kit of the Cuddy Sark. And it's over there, and once in a while it comes out. And that goes back to the one that got destroyed, so, by my kids. I'm afraid of the water. I've never been on a, a sailing boat. Um, I've been in a motorboat, but that's it. So no, I don't know where it came from, but it's there. Uh, I don't know why it's there. There may be something in my background that fits that I don't know. I have another version of this, not as complete as this. It's just the, the framework of it, but I'm going to make a diorama out of it. How There's a picture of the original blue nose being built on the shore here. So I'm going to make, you know, scaffolding and all kinds of stuff and make it into that. So, I, you know, it's going to get put to good use, which I, I don't want to throw anything out. But in the end, I had to throw the first set of frames out. They were just no good. I'm trying to make the whole thing myself, everything. Sails, too. All the little dead eyes that, that, we were, that you may have talked about before. I'm going to try, you know. Everything is a challenge. That's the whole point of this. There's a picture of how the frames should look, and there is how the frames do look. And then the other half of this particular drawing shows all of the beams that go across. Now, so that's where this comes in again. So if I, were to lay, if I were to put this on this drawing, it is this section here. And there's all the beams that go across. So that's how that's how I use that. Now, how you use that is a whole there's a whole process to it. It's called lofting. You know, where you're taking the drawings have measurements um, at various points along the way you have to shape each and every one of these. So you plot those. I made up a, I made up a form that I could plot them on, and you end up with the shape half the shape of a frame, um, cut the paper, just crease the paper in the center, fold it in half, put a piece of carbon paper under it, press down, and then open it up and you've got the whole frame. So that's how that, that's called lofting. I think that's what that's called. That's what I call it. So that's how I got the shape of every one of these frames. There's 58 frames from front to back. And in each of those frames, you may not be able to see it here, but there are 13 pieces of wood. Each one of these frames, there's six on the front and, and seven on the back. And all of them are pinned together with little wooden nails. And that's where this stuff comes in. This is all made from bamboo um, kebab sticks, cut down or to reduce to 33 thousandths of an inch. So that's, that's the process.